Hey guys, welcome back to the channel Custom Carving and Epoxy UK. I'm not gloved up because I haven't mixed my resin yet, it's safe. Um, but I just wanted to do um, another quick experiment with this sort of design because my first attempt, I was reasonably happy with it. A um, couple of things I would have liked different, so I would have liked the white to have come out further. So in order to do that, I need to start, I think, lower on this design. Um, I like the centers, I thought they came out great, and I like the little stamens in the center as well, I think they came out great, and, and the iridescent powder in the uh, the white blooms. Now I don't have any other colors of iridescent powder, so it got me to thinking of what color scheme am I going to do, because I don't want to do the same thing. And again, I think I, if I'd have gone with a plainer background, and I love the crackle effect, the way that it's created that effect on the back, but it's kind of lost those petals that I drew in the um, in between. Um, so. I'm going to try this again, and I'm going to do it with a slightly different colour scheme this time. So the white is going to be pretty much the same, except for I've got this powder here. Now it's a really fine powder. I got it off Timu, and they call it mermaid powder. Um, and to me it's like a cat's eye powder looking at it, but it's not the same consistency. It's quite light. So I thought that would look quite cool in the blooms. Um, for this centre part, I'm going to be using winter. <laughs> which looks like a, a sort of lavendery purpley colour. I'm going to be doing the papaya and gold again for the, the stamens because I thought they looked really good and these petals on the outskirts. But the aim is here, is again, I'm just trying to get A, get used to this mould. And I was, looks like I was right. Anywhere past that point doesn't bloom. It just literally stays the same. Um, so I'm going to do exactly the same this time, except for with my ovals, I'm going to try and bring them in and make them a little bit smaller so that I get more definition. Um, and I think that'll create a better looking piece overall. So if that's what you're interested in, you're in the right place. I'm going to mix up six ounces of resin first of all, um, just for this first part, um, and then we'll get on with it. But do me a favour, if it's your first time to the channel, or if you're a regular viewer, because 80% of the views I get don't subscribe to the channel. So do me a favour, like and subscribe, and I'll see you when the resin's mixed up and at temperature. So here we go, guys, and we're back. Now, it's not quite up to temperature yet, but I want to show you what I've done. So resin's at about 33. I want it to get to about 36 this time just to be that little bit thicker hopefully to give me a little bit more control and this was my design um, that I used last time because I think when you do a project like this it's good to have a design in mind but what I've done is based on the imperfections I think in that first attempt I've done another design um, and I did this on the computer so that I could keep it reasonably even and what I've done is I've brought those ovals in a little bit further so that hopefully it gives me more space to pull out those ends. Um, and I've tried to equally space them as much as I can. And this is just as a guide to be able to hopefully draw around those ovals and get the right shape. Now, whether it's going to work or not, I don't know. <laughs> um, it's attempt to, as I say, I just thought I'd get the computer out and make a template. And let's see if it works. So as always, I want to get my colours pretty much ready before the um, resin is up to temperature. And as I say, I'm going for 36 degrees today, just because I want it to be a tiny bit thicker. Not a lot, but just, as I say, a little bit. Um, and I've just noticed I haven't got my gold, so there we go. Um, so the first colour is going to be um, the gold and the papaya for those dots. Um, and as I say, I think I'm going to want to go in with this winter and I'm going to try this mermaid powder. Now this is going to fly absolutely everywhere. So I'm just going to move the mold out of the way. Um, and as I say, it's a very, very light powder. Now I'm going to put some of this in, the, in with the white bloom as well. And hopefully it's going to give us that glisten coming through the bloom um, as well. So I'm going to put a tiny bit in to my white and literally that is what I'm talking about when I say a tiny bit in there. That's going to be with my bloom paste. And then a little bit more, again not going overboard, for those centres in that one. And you don't get a lot of this in a pot and I think it cost me about six, seven quid off Timu, so it's not a cheap one. <laughs> 
Um, so I'm just hoping it works and I don't know how thick it's going to look and I want these circles that I put in to be quite thick so I'm still going to add some normal mica powder and I've got this winter which is like a lavendery colour which I've never used before but I thought that would go nice mixing it with this mermaid and as you can see it looks very similar in colour but hopefully we'll get two different effects so again just a little bit of this not too much on the end of my popsicle stick it's hard to show you guys when I do this but literally and then it falls off the stick about that much is what I'm looking at so that is hopefully going to give me a really nice color for those center circles and some dots um, and then we'll see what happens with these outer ones what color I'm going to do those um, I like to still have an element of creativity where I do it as I do it rather than planning absolutely everything out um, as you've seen in previous projects sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't so this is that papaya for the orange again decent amount going into the pot with just a tiny bit of gold um, just because I think it gives it a better shimmer and this is the gold I'm going to use it's that um, metallic powder but when I say a tiny bit I still want the orange to be the main color so with the gold literally he says <laughs> Part of the struggle for me is getting the right amount of mica. But literally half that probably. Tap it in. And there we go. And that'll be my colours. Um, so you've seen there I've mixed up four different micas essentially um, to do this. Um, and don't be afraid to do that because that's where some of your best results come from. It gives you your own unique colours. Um, and I think that's part of the fun. This is my ocean white. And again I'm just going to put one drop. In my white this is where things start to get messy usually one drop oh it's actually gone on the stick and a half one and a half has gone in there and I think that'll be fine just gonna wipe my gloves because that ocean white bottle is always the one that gets me messy and then again because I've got it at the side I've got my white sinker from let's resin I'm just going to put a few drops of that in. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then that should be my colours ready to mix. Always make sure you've got a reasonably level surface as well when you're doing anything technical, guys, whether it's blooms, whether it's crackly fet, anything like that, because if you haven't, it won't work and it will shift. And there's nothing more disappointing than that when the whole thing shifts. And then I've really got to think about the background colours, because I think for me that slightly spoiled the last one, the background. Um, I think it took away from those second layer of petals that I put in behind the, the, the lily star one. So I've really got to think about that on this one um, and, and think about what background I'm going to use. It was almost too much I felt. So there we go. We're at 35.6, which means it's heating up quicker than I thought. So I'm going to pour my colours first. Again, around about half a pot to three quarters. And I'm hoping it's going to be, as I say, that tiny bit thicker, thicker today because I've left it a little bit longer. And then I'm just going to pour the rest straight into the mould. And hopefully it should be about the right amount because it was yesterday. <laughs> um, and always remember to scrape your pots because otherwise you're going to be left with about half an ounce to an ounce of resin in your cup. So I always like to scrape as much of it out as I can and it just allows everything to spread and I think that's pretty much all I'm going to get out and then I'm just going to push it around to the sides just to give it a helping hand and make sure that I've got a reasonably even coat all the way around this I've measured the mold as well guys this is an eight inch um, round mold that's all it is nothing special just an eight inch round mold there we go so I'm pretty happy with that got a nice even layer and I'm just going to wipe my stick so I can use it again in the next project 
and there's going to be a few guys i hope you're liking the content because i'm putting a lot of work into the channel this year i really want to grow it i want us to become one of the largest resin communities there is on youtube which is ambitious um but hopefully you're liking the videos enough to like and subscribe and help us grow together and learn and that's not what you want to do <laughs> um part of working with resin um there we go it's all fun um so that's that now i'm going to mix up my colors whilst that's settling a little bit and this is going to be mainly my white just with that little bit of that mermaid powder in there Again, giving it a good mix round, making sure it's all mixed together. And I'm hoping I can still see that logo just, which I can. So that is my white bloom. And again, that can go straight into the piping bag. Much as I can get out. And then I have got my, um, my drip tray mould at the minute, which is a plant pot at the side of me. So again, I'm going to scrape the rest into there once we've done the bloom <laughs> um, i always run out of space at this point and this is those two colors so that winter and um and i don't know why it's called winter and that mermaid powder so i'm just hoping it's going to mix up and make a really nice color here um with a really glittery finish almost so if you can see it's slightly transparent though which worries me a little bit I'm going to keep mixing it and see how opaque it is because I want it to be quite opaque this but again I don't want it to be too heavy and I've never used this mermaid powder before so I'm hoping it doesn't sink and create the B word but that is lovely it's not quite dark enough for me though so I am going to add a couple of drops of alcohol ink to it and again, I am conscious of the time at the minute and the fact that I've waited for the temperature to go up. Perhaps I shouldn't have dark indigo. That will do. Just to give it a darker tinge and make sure that I've got that colour running through it. So just a couple of drops in there. And again, this is all improvisation as I'm doing it, guys. So hopefully it's going to work. Yeah, mixing it around i love that color now so hopefully it's not going to be too transparent and hopefully it's going to give me the effect i'm looking for so that can go straight into the second bag and again i am rushing this <laughs> a tiny bit next is um the papaya and the gold so again just mixing it around hopefully getting that color right beautiful color and that can go in piping bag number three so that is my main colors um hopefully they're going to work together hopefully they're going to create a nice result um and hopefully we're going to be able to get this design in nothing is guaranteed though in resin um, and what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to get my silicone tool and go around the sides of my mold making sure there's no bubbles in that edge as you can see and any that I can see, I'm just going to flick into the center. And you can see this is really starting to thicken up now already. So maybe I've left it too long. I hope not. <laughs> um, but we'll find out. And then I'm going to torch it, as always, just to get rid of any of those surface bubbles. Because the last thing I want is a surface bubble. There we go happy with that and then it's pretty much ready to go for the design so i'm going to go in with the white first and try and create those ovals and i'm going to try and start at the top this time and finish at the top so if there is any heavier amounts it's in the top and it is feeling warm guys so i'm just hoping i've not left this resin too long to bloom it's a fine line <laughs> between wanting a slightly thicker resin and leaving it too long that you don't get the bloom effect and that's one thing i have noticed and it's different for every resin i've had a few people asking me specific temperatures and stuff like that it's hard to answer without knowing the consistency of your resin so the more you get to know your resin the more you experiment and play with it the better hopefully you'll get at blooms so here we go i'm going to start with the white and again the plan is to pipe around the outer edge of those ovals and as I say, it's only a plan at this point. So I want it to be about two to three mil where I'm cutting off the piping bag. 
and I want it to be automatically just dripping out the bag, which it is now, so happy with that. And I'm gonna try and start at the top of each oval and then work my way around like so. And I do want a thickish layer on there because I want there to be enough for it to go around. And sorry about that guys, my, my <laughs> sound system just decided to switch itself on, but uh, there we go, always fun when you're recording. And again, I'm gonna start at the top and hopefully this is just gonna naturally flow out around that guide. I want it to be reasonably even, but you've got to give it enough so that it will spread as well. That's where some people go wrong, I think, with blooms, is there has to be enough of the white to actually spread. If you don't put enough in, you're not going to get the bloom effect. And again, I know these aren't perfect, guys. I'm still working on the piping skills, if I'm being completely honest. There we go. And I think that's been reasonably successful compared to attempt number one. So I'm just gonna fold the tip of this over and leave this in there for now. Now, um, at this point, if you can see any bits that might blob, just work them around. And I've just used the words, so we're probably gonna get that now. <laughs> I was determined not to use it. Any bits that just look a little bit heavier, just pull them around. And I don't think there's that many actually. And don't forget, I am gonna be, didn't want that to happen, uh, pulling this out anyway at the end uh, when I draw in sort of those petals. So next is this purpley color. And I want this to be a little bit thinner. Um, just because again, I want it to bloom, um, but I don't want it to overtake the whole piece, but there needs to be enough of it to come out. And then I'm gonna try and, as I say, just get a circle in each one of those, like so. And this is a very different consistency to the white. Um, very different, so again, we'll see. I'm hoping it's still going to look nice. But as I say, I'm noticing that this is a different consistency to the white. But I'm hoping it'll be okay. So that is the purple for this point. Next bit is the gold or orange, whatever you want to call it. And again, I want this to be a little bit smaller than what I've already done. And in fact, what I'm gonna do before I do that is there's a couple of bits here that I'm just a little bit concerned about blobbing. And I've used the word again. <laughs> uh, so I'm just gonna pull them round. Again, there was this tiny bit here, which I think was a little bit much. And again, just be gentle when you do this, guys, because the last thing you wanna do is push it down because that's gonna, if anything, encourage that that B word, but I'm liking the color. It's definitely a lighter color than I thought it was gonna be. And again, for the gold, I'm gonna probably go about half the, the amount on the piping bag because I want it deliberately to be thinner. And I want it to naturally drip out the bag, hopefully, he says. Now this is the bit that will take a little bit of time. So I'm gonna try and put three dots in each of these circles and I want it to naturally just fall out of the bag like that. And this is where you need patience because you don't want to squeeze your bag. Otherwise you will get uneven dots. And the idea here is hopefully I want them all to be roughly the same size. And I'm going to fast forward this bit for you guys. Right, I'm gonna go back in with a few more colors in a minute. But what I wanna do first is just pull out this outer ring on them all, just to really bring those petals out before everything starts to fully bloom. 
and as I say it might not work guys I'm just really hoping it does um, so that's pretty much those done now I'm gonna get my purple back out and hope it's not too heavy at the minute but I just want to try and get a little line going through here as well so I'm gonna use a stick and I'm just going to take hopefully a few dots of this, load up my stick and see if I can get a few dots in the center by doing that. And again, it's the same thing. I'm just going to wait for it to drop and fall off the stick. So I'm going to fast forward this part as well for you guys. So now with these ones, I'm going to pull them both in and out is the plan. So I'm going to go all the way in like so. In fact, no, I'm not. I love that design. <laughs> just found a new design that I like. So again, just going through the center of them. All the way in like that. That looks amazing. Um, so there we go. I've just found a, a new design that I quite like. Now, can I remember it for any future projects? That's the question. And the light has just run out. <laughs> Why does nothing ever go perfect when you're uh, doing a complex video? I'm loving this. As I say, I'm just trying to be careful not to ruin the canna lilies though that I've already put in. All those dots in the center. And then I've got an idea of what I'm going to do with these as well in a second. But yeah, I think they look really cool. And then what I'm going to do is just again use my tool and just slightly pull out the edge like so for each one of these and this is certainly my most intricate design I'm glad I've got it on camera hopefully if it works <laughs> he says it's a bit premature but um, I'm loving that and again that was just found by playing with the resin guys so again experiment you know See what you like. I do think this purple is going to be quite pale though. And I'm hoping that the um, the mermaid powder that I put in there is going to make a bit of a difference for that. Um, and my only concern here is I'm going to have gaps where I know that that bloom paste won't come in. So what I might try and do, and again, this is really risky at this stage um, because it's already started to bloom but I'm just going to put a little tiny bit across the center of each so that hopefully that still blooms in a little bit. And I'm hoping that they bloom beautifully, but uh, we'll find out. So that's pretty much it for my bloom. Um, might put a couple of dots of the white actually just in the center. Again, just to hopefully bring it all together and letting it drop itself. And these ones in the center I know won't move. They'll just stay where they are. And I'm hoping, as I say, it's not too heavy. Just maybe three or four of these. And there we go. Um, and I think that's pretty much all I'm gonna do with it. I quite like it where it is at the minute and I think you can do too much. Um, in fact, no, I am gonna pull this line that I've just put in slightly through. But I'm hopeful. I like the design as it is. Um, so I'm just gonna go around it now with a torch. And that'll be it, you know? Hopefully it's gonna continue blooming and give us a nice, pretty flower bloom design. But you never know. It could all go horribly wrong. Um, but I'm liking that at the minute. And then my spares, again, I've got my um, drip plant pot, I call it, to the side of me. So again, I'm just going to pour all of the spares into that. And you can see, look how thick it's getting now. So I've just made a quick decision, guys, as well. Before I put the backing on, I want to put one drop of alcohol ink in that centre just to sort of darken that center a little bit. Again, I'm experimenting here, and I'm just gonna put one drop 
and hopefully that should give me a darker center regardless of what backing I put on. Um, but we'll see. Um, so I'll see you guys in about five hours and we'll put the back on together. So guys, you've got voiceover Andy here because for some reason the microphone cut out. But um, basically just deciding what to do for the back. And I didn't want necessarily a crackly effect with this, but um, I just thought I would see what mixing a few different colors would do. So this is my dark purple. Um, the plan is to put that in. I wanted a little bit of green as well, I decided uh, at this point. Um, and also I was going to mix some white in just to see what effects it creates if I put them all in together. I was also going to almost see if I could do a crackly effect without putting that transparent layer on first because for me that's always a bit of a pain. So I'm going to try and puddle pour it and just put a bit of that clear in the centre and then just puddle pour the colours into it and see what happens. Make sure you stay till the end because there was a really surprising result and it just shows you never know what's going to happen with your resin. So again, just getting those colours ready. Metallic purple, going to put a bit of chameleon powder in it as well. And I've got this pearlescent white as well. So just mixing those colours up. Around about half a cup for each. And then we're going to pour. But do me a favour guys as well, really appreciate each and every subscriber because I'm really trying to push the channel forward this year. So if you haven't already, please like and subscribe to the channel. It makes a massive difference and it's the only way that YouTube knows that you're actually liking the content. So it hopefully pushes it out to more people that could find it useful. So if, you, if you're learning anything or you're enjoying it, let me know. So now just pouring a little tiny bit into that centre of that clear. And that is what's going to start the puddle pour. So um, again, whatever was left in my cup, I always eyeball it. I don't particularly measure. And now we're going to go mix up the colours. Again, just scraping everything out the cup because I don't like to waste resin. Wherever I can avoid it, um, I like to make sure that I'm not wasting any. So the first one I'm going to mix up uh, is the um, the dark blue. Sorry, I said purple earlier, isn't it? It's a metallic blue, this one. And it's quite a thick paste, but again, this is the way I measure it, is just stir it around. Whatever's left on the stick is what goes in the cup. Next one I'm going to go with is the pearlescent white and again doing exactly the same as the last one stirring it around and whatever's left on the stick is going to go in the cup and then to this one i'm just going to add some uh, it's almost a pink chameleon powder um, just to see if that creates any effect or not and i'll say make sure you stay till the end because something really bizarre happens which i didn't expect and then this is that green just tapping it in and then just going to mix these up and pour them in. So that is the blue mix. Really nice metallic colour. Been using it in some of my waves uh, recently as well with my ocean art and it comes out lovely. This is that um, pearlescent white and the chameleon powder. Almost creates a, a little bit of a, a faintish pink. And then for that green. And at this point I decided if I wanted... Um, any green showing. I wanted it really to be at the edge uh, rather than in the centre. So that's why I'm going to go with this one first. Again, just making sure, making sure it's thoroughly mixed. And then I'm just going to pour it straight into that centre and uh, do a puddle pour. And all of it's going in. Hopefully then the other colours will push it all the way to the outskirts. So that is the green. Next, going in with the blue. In fact, no, change my mind, going in with the pearlescent whitey pink. And I'm just going to puddle pour this in layers. So now going in with the blue. And all of the blue is going to go in now. And trying to give it a bit of height and that just really creates that pushing effect. Um, and then I'm going to do exactly the same with the whitey pink pearlescent colour and hope it pushes it all the way out to the edge. As I said, make sure you stay tuned till the end because something that's never happened to me before happens when this cures. 
and then that is pretty much it i'm going to torch it now um and let it do its thing and as i say it does do something very very interesting morning guys and it is the next day and it looks like something has appeared in the resin <laughs> I don't know what you see there, but to me, it kind of looks like a little angel um, has just formed in the resin. And you saw how I poured it, so it's very bizarre. Um, I don't know what it's going to look like on the other side, but again, I quite like this almost sort of um, striations effect around the edge on this side. And as I say, as a bonus, I got the little, little angel in there, so <laughs> we'll see how it turns out. But I'm hopeful here with this um we'll find out together so just getting ready to demold it and here we go the moment of truth what does the other side look like <laughs> wow now that is stunning i think it's better than the other one not perfect still because as I say, what I need to do is figure out the exact balance to get this line higher to pull it down, I think. Um, but I do absolutely love that. And that mermaid powder, whatever it is, um, from Timu, that's lovely. Gives it a real sparkle. Um, so there we go. I think, again, we've got a success. I love how these little petals have turned out as well. Um, just on the outskirts and again I like the background it's quite dark but that's what I wanted for this so let me know what you think in comments guys do you like it has it been a success um, I know it's given me a few ideas for a future project and uh, just like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys on the next one